to doing that it's hard for us to be on the the receiving end um, and and taking help. And I think what you illustrate is that even those of us who are fixers and so used to, you know, being the one who comes in and, and, and helps folks out, that we have to be okay with, with saying we need help. And I think the, the biggest thing that, you know, of all of this is that you knew you needed it. And the fact that you went and got even counseling, which I think for a lot of us um, can be a stigma, particularly in communities of color, that it's a stigma to go get help. And so what was it in you that said, I need to go, this, this problem is, is bigger than myself and I need someone who can help me um, figure this out and get through this? Well, counseling is not something, like you mentioned, it's not something that <laughs> anyone in my family definitely did or uh, anyone in the community that I'm from, East Texas, I can't even name maybe one person who's ever gone to a counselor. Um, but I knew that I needed to talk to someone that was objective, that did not have to look at my situation and say, Shailen, we know you. You should do X, Y, and Z because of the past that they've known about me. Or talk to me as if all the experiences that I'm going through is because of something I've done or to make me feel as if I'm in a worse situation or, or I'm in the situation because of X, Y, and Z. So it was really important to me to have someone that was open and honest and didn't care anything about who I was prior to the divorce, who I was related to, who I was married to. Um, because the family I was married into, they had a, a lot of clout. They have a, a lot of influence and everyone surrounding my life was all connected. And so who else would I talk to who wouldn't go back and talk with him? That was always in the back of my mind. So I needed someone who was just there to listen to me. And, you know, I think for a lot of women in that situation, Shaylon, it's the dividing of the friendships and trying to figure out how do you start over when you've been connected to someone and you've done an amazing job of being able to to find your place in the midst of going through something so traumatic. What advice would you give to women who are in similar situations? I mean, you've told us about, you know, making your list and knowing um, what you need to ask for. And, and again, the relationship piece and getting counseling and someone who can be objective to listen to you. But what are some other pieces of advice that you would give to women who are in that kind of situation? I'd definitely say to dig deep in, take an assessment of what are, I consider, non-traditional assets. Everyone has skills. Everyone has talents. And I'm not talking about the singing and dancing kind, even though you may be able to sing and dance. <laughs> but you may be a great public speaker. You may be someone who is great with finance and math. You may be someone who's at home. Use those skills to improve the situation that you're in. So, for example, I am, I'm not a good homemaker at all. I can't cook to save my life unless it's a recipe. But my daughter loves to cook. So I started using those skills with her more so. So she was able to pay for a lot of the things that I couldn't because she was selling her, her uh, recipes, all of her meals that she was making. My other daughter wow. is in the art, And she was able to pay for all of her things that she wanted to do. So we had to look at our family as we work together, we work collectively, and we support each other. And so when instead of us looking at whether you're a single mom or whether you're by yourself, you have something that you can give to the community, you have something that you can give to yourself, and it's going to help you in the long run. And so you took your love for books and did something amazing. You started Book Mecca. And so how did that idea come up and talk to the audience about what is Book Mecca and what made you take this love for books into something so much bigger? Yeah, Book Mecca actually started twofold. One is uh, it started with my kids. I love books. I have always been one to go to the library, check out books, and always had a book. When I got older, I didn't read as much, but I wanted my kids to learn to read and love to read too. My oldest daughter, she loves to read, always has a book in her hand. My youngest has dyslexia. So it was a struggle to get her to 
love reading or even want to read and be confident with reading. And so we got to the point to where we would have challenges on going to the library, check out so many books and try and read against each other. Or we would try and do the mayor's reading program every summer to the point to where she got so much support and she was, she's now comfortable enough to read books and not be afraid to pick up a book. She will do so without me telling her to pick up a book now, which is huge. And my oldest daughter had a, a favorite author that she loved, fell in love with the series. And we went to the library and tried to find it. And it was one copy, but it was a long waiting list. Went to another library. It was two copies, long wait list. Another library, it was two to three weeks to order. Went to bookstores. They were either not there or limited. Uh, and so we kept coming across the same thing with these authors to the point to where my daughter and um, some of my relatives said, let's just make, make your own, make your own bookstore. Curate the books themselves and make it one place where you can find the books. So that's sort of how Book Mecca started is one place to highlight the authors, the stories that are out there because they don't get noticed. They don't get amplified as much as they should. And a lot of these New York Times selling books that are out there are not highlighted. They're not put on the front shelf. And I want a platform to do that. Well, how can folks get in touch with you, learn more about Book Mecca and just get to, to know the amazing work that you're doing. Give us all your information. Yes, you can follow us on Facebook at Book Mecca of Texas. You can also follow us on Instagram at book.mecca. You can also email me at bookmeccaoftexas at gmail.com. Um, or you can even go to our website and sign up for a subscription, a newsletter, and that's bookmecca.org. So feel free to reach out to me. You can DM me. I'm always on Instagram. And even today I have a posting, a live event at 6 p.m. on Facebook Live at Book Mecca. So feel free to reach out to me. Awesomeness. My last question, what's next? What does next look like for Shaylon? I am Book Mecca gets to the point to where we have authors, faces as prominent and noticeable as actors. That is what I want to see. I want everyone's face and story to have a place. I, I love it. I love it, Shaylon. I want I want everyone's story to have a place. That's huge. And that's really what this show is about is to your point, it's taking people that we look at that are, you know, everyday folks and recognizing the power of their stories and that their stories have a place. And so I want to say thank you for being on the show today, for sharing mm -hmm. your story, for inspiring us to know that no matter how dark it may be and how cha challenging um, it may be, that we can get help and our relationships are the key to our health and our happiness and success. And so thank you for being on the show. And this is Dr. Francois Booker-Drew. And I want to encourage you, go to my website at drfrancois.com to learn more information about this um, podcast and other ways that you can engage with me in the work that I'm doing. Thanks so much. Thank you.